So let's slide from the Publish tab all the way over to the left to the Effects tab. And as you can see in the Effects tab, it's not just limited to video filters, which you might think that you have inside of Premiere. You actually have a whole bunch of different options from audio configurations like loudness normalization, video limiters. You can even get in and add time code here as well as getting in and doing watermarking. Now we're going to talk about watermarking and adding time code in an upcoming lesson, but I want to draw your attention to the first option, the Lumetri Look slash LUT. Now the big question is why would you ever want to apply a LUT or a look at this stage of the game as opposed to adding it in your Premiere timeline? Well I'm going to use the example of a digital cinema package. A digital cinema package requires a color space conversion to your entire clip or your entire sequence. Now, many lookup tables are designed to give you a specific color grade or a look that you're going to want to have on your footage. A color space conversion like the one that I'm talking about is what I refer to as a utility LUT, meaning there's nothing really stylistic about it. You're just changing color spaces. So why would you want to apply that inside of Premiere and then you're constantly turning it on and turning it off. You got to remember to make sure that it's active when you're going to go and you're going to export. You don't need to worry about all that. I would rather just apply it one shot when I'm done to my footage. And you can do that right here. I'm just going to turn on the Lumetri look slash LUT. And if we did want to apply a LUT, we could simply hit select, head to the desktop and choose the LUT that we want. But in this case, I'm just going to choose a different look. Let's just choose, um, we'll choose blue cold. Why not? We'll really change things up because I want to head back to our presets. Now, what I should probably do is call up our H.264 for client approval to make sure that everything is the way that we want. I'm going to come back to publish to make sure that FTP option is still there. I'm going to come back to effects. I'm going to come to my Lumetri look LUT. I'm going to go to blue cold. We're going to head back up to our preset. Let's save this preset again. But now, of course, we're going to save not only the publish settings, but the effects settings as well. Now you'll notice that by default, when I added an effects look, it automatically had that box checked for me to save those effects settings. So that's always handy to have in case you've gotten in and tailored things the way that you like, but then you've gone and forgotten to hit save. You don't need to worry about that. Premiere's got you covered. What I'm now going to do is say, okay, of course, we're going to be told we're going to overwrite a previous preset, which is fine. I'm simply going to say, yes, we now have our H.264 for client approval. And again, we're going to switch. And let's switch back. And now what we have is not only our effects look, but we also have our publish options. So conceivably, we're now ready to not only export this with whatever effect that we want, it's also going to get published to the exact location that we want it to go to. Now, one thing that I do want to point out that I didn't mention inside of our look at the publish tab is that if you wanted to, and I don't normally recommend this, but you could always delete the local file after transfer. But because this is an approval file, we always want to keep the master saved to wherever we're exporting to, in our case, the desktop. So if the client does approve it, we're not going to need to go back in and re-export the final version a second time.